Alright, hi everybody. My name is Dr. Wally Renee, and we're going to be going over some of the basics um, of how to use the compare software. And we're going to also talk just a tiny bit about how we use it at our school, um, the Medical University of South Carolina, and some some ways to incorporate it in the curriculum. The the first thing that we do is freshman year we start off using this technology in order to evaluate student wax ups and dental morphology and we start them off um, on training how to scan early on before they actually pick up a handpiece they'll be trained how to do scanning and then they'll, they'll utilize the comparison software as a self-assessment tool more than anything else as to how they're doing with their wax ups and morphology in addition to this in fixed prosthodontics 1, 2, and 3 they utilize it not only as self-assessment but also as a way to evaluate their preparations for a grade and some faculty use it in addition to that in order to better assess the student and, and a pro provide a more objective evaluation. So we're just going to go through the first part which is scanning and the first step is to add the student's name and in this case I like to student to put their year since we have m multiple years using it at the same time and then their name and they're going to enter that information into the computer and it's going to save that and they're going to select the tooth that they're wishing to compare and analyze and then they're going to pick a library this is important for crown preparations as to fabricate a restoration but not when you're just using compare so none of those really matter as what you input for for the purposes of assessment and there's multiple tabs that they could scan under but you want to make sure that they're scanning under the prep tab and they're going to activate the, the camera and start doing imaging and you'll notice that it's a video speed capture powder free imaging that's rotational based so you're truly capturing all the information and the green color on the is giving visual feedback and green represents a, a really good focal depth and the oranges and the reds are still good data being captured so it's just meaning that you're getting a little bit farther away and you can see we're just rotating around and it's important to get the type of tooth mesial and distal to the preparation and if there's no type of tooth distal say you're doing tooth number two you want to capture two mesial to the preparation and um, and that's all there is to it less than a minute so it takes a couple seconds to actually generate the model and you'll see that um, the student could evaluate how they did by hitting the data density view icon right there. This just indicates if they have an error on their on their scanning and you don't want any blue on your preparation and so we don't have any here. Ice view is a really great tool clinically but on a type it on it doesn't give too much of an advantage. Alright we're gonna load up the compare software now and maximize it. What, what you're going to get is these two in the load tab, you're going to get load master, load sample. And so you're going to find the master preparation. It's usually in a folder called patients um, if you have the scanner and everything. And we have a ton of masters on this particular computer, but the one that we're going to find today is the master for the all ceramic preparation on tooth number eight. And we're going to open that folder, restorations, it time stamps it, and we're going to find the prep folder. And here is the department approved anterior all ceramic preparation master that is reduced to the proper specifications that we decided on as an institution. And then you're going to load the student preparation that we just scanned in and it's also in that same prep folder. And we call it um, 2016 name and we're going to find that prep folder right there and we're going to select that. And what the software is going to automatically do is it's automatically going to align those two separate and distinct scans into one image. And obviously the preps are going to be different because they're two different preps, but the adjacent typodont teeth are identical. They're made from the same mold. Um, every typodont is just ever so slightly different, but it seems to be insignificant for us. Because if you could look here and see the alignment when you slice it using these slice tools, these two lines, if you could see them, they're basically coincident with one another, represent the two separate and distinct models. And they're off by probably about 10 microns, which is a tenth of a thickness of a human hair. It's insignificant. And if you come over here on the preparation, you can see there's major differences because they're 
one's a student, one's a faculty, and that's what the learning tool is about. And so we have very similar um, type it on teeth on either side. That's what allows us to do this accurate alignment. It even works for two separate type it -ons. You don't have to have them scan on the same type it -on. You could have a student scan it with their type it -on and the faculty scan it with their type it -on and they align. Um, but it's really neat. If it didn't align for whatever reason or if you're unhappy with the way it aligned, you click the define button here and you go to the drag align tool and it's going to separate those models and allow you to have a little bit of input and so you're just going to drag it and you're going to get it close but it's not going to be perfect because what's going to happen is when you click this check mark right here it's going to do the rest for you it's going to automatically take into consideration many many thousands of data points of the adjacent teeth and the base here and it's going to align those models um, excellent alignment I could already tell from the leopard pattern here really good and so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the next step and it's called set occlusal angle. This is going to be the path of insertion for this preparation and we're going to go ahead and set this up you, as if you're going to deliver the crown. And here we have the, the path of insertion for this particular preparation here coming down like that and you could look and see that it's slightly tilted to the mesial because that prep is a little bit tilted. And we're going to lock that in by clicking the set occlusal angle. And so we lock that in. Now we're going to go to the margin tab. That's the next step. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and delete my margins that I had already marked here by clicking on the edit curve tool and the delete icon. And I'm just going to delete them. So I want to show you how to do your margin here. We have four margins that you can mark. The first one is called tissue. That is for a later update where we're going to mark the tissue level and it will automatically mar measure to the, to the finish line and it's going to measure super gingival, sub gingival distances. And so state boards and we also at the institution here require a certain level that we like it to be above the tissue, half a millimeter. And we don't give the student much leeway. In other words, if it's four millimeters super gingival, we wouldn't take off points, etc. So that's going to be able to measure that. But right now, we're not going to we're not going to mark that. We have margin, which is your typical self-explanatory margin. We have axial base, which is the internal angle of your finish line, and we have occlusal. So let's just go through these, and we're going to mark the margin right now. I'm going to use the wand. We have two options: trace or wand. But for this one, let's just use wand. And wand is kind of automatic in that it it finds the hard edge for you. And so you go a third of the way and you click, you just kind of click it in stages. And when you get back to the beginning here, you click it and it's going to automatically seal that. And what happens when it seals it is you get defaulted to this editing tool, which is called Move. And I love this tool because it's so intuitive to use. It's really easy. You just drag the margin and you stretch it and pull it to where it needs to be and it actually automatically straightens it out a little bit too. Um, so students are automatically going to be looking at their finish lines and finding out, you know, hey, look, it's rough here and what am I, you know, I'm too wide. And so this tool in and of itself of having students mark their own margins is, is pretty significant. And, and this margin move tool has a couple features. If you look at this bubble here, if you make it tiny, like make it about that small, you can only move a little bit, okay? If you make it big, you can move a ton of your margin at the same time. So it's just, you know, customization. If you want to, you just move a tiny little bit. Um, there's also another tool for editing the margin, um, add segments. This add segments icon right here, you click before the error and then you tap along, clicking along, and you've click after the error and then you hit the button again to seal that and it's going to go ahead and fix that automatically. Alright, we're going to move on now to the axial base and for this one I'm going to use trace. Trace does not have any automatic feature whatsoever. Um, so wherever I click it goes. And so you're just clicking along in steps and you're trying to find and demarcate the internal line angle of that finish line. And so for a chamfer, it's a little bit more difficult, but we teach a shoulder. Um, so there should be a pretty distinct, it's a rounded shoulder, so there should be 
a distinct angle to where the axial wall starts to curve up. And so both these are live, so if I just toggle between them, I could, you know, if I saw something on this one, I don't have to click any buttons. I could automatically adjust them together. Um, as I'm looking right here, I need to pull this out. There's also Ice View. Ice View is a really a unique tool, especially clinically on, on live patients, but for typonauts it works also just not quite as well. You could see the, the two-dimensional high-quality HD photograph overlaid on top of the preparation, the three-dimensional model, and it helps, it really does help find margins, particularly clinically when they're subgingival. Um, so that's ice view, just click the little eye here and you could toggle it on and off. Okay. And so we're going to move on to the um, occlusal margin. The occlusal margin for an anterior tooth, we're going to trace that, is the biconcave lingual fossa. So we're going to click that. For posterior tooth, it represents the occlusal table. And once again, when we seal it, we go straight to this move tool. It takes a couple seconds, and we have a nice outline there. So once we have those three margins marked, we're going to hit the compare tab. And what's really nice is we have five different tools that we could use to objectively evaluate this preparation. The first one, I think, in my opinion, is the most significant, and that's called the compute difference. And when we click on this, what it's going to do is it's going to automatically look at the difference between the faculty preparation and the student preparation and come up with a 3D color-coded map of errors. And we have many different views we could look at this. One is with this faculty preparation. Another one is just the faculty preparation, just the student preparation. So by clicking these icons, we could switch between, toggle between different views. Students typically at first look at just their preparation. And what we're going to notice is that red is going to be overreduced, and anywhere I highlight my cursor is going to automatically be updated with a live numerical value as to exactly how far the student was off from the ideal preparation. And here we go again, overreduced is red, kind of means stop, bad, and underreduced is blue, it's a little bit less um, threatening than red, and it you know it represents a reversible error. And what I want you to immediately notice is that on the right hand side we have all these metrics. The percent surface area of the student preparation that was within 194 microns of the faculty is 84 percent. The maximum they were under reduced was 370 microns, over is 440, and you could save these metrics as an Excel spreadsheet. Also the faculty could be as strict as they want with these metrics. Um, we typically at our university do 300 microns and so you could slide that or you could just delete and type right in 300 and this student actually did a fairly good job at reducing properly for the material um, so 97 percent of their preparation was within 300 microns of the faculty preparation and we got a couple little errors here they over reduced their second plane on the facial um, but if we're more strict you start to pick up errors. And what students oftentimes like to do is they go ahead and switch to this overlay view and they'll actually come in here and slice right over an error. And so you could drag that and they'll zoom in and so now we could see red and we see the white line representing the faculty preparation, the red areas, their over-reduced second plane, a reduction on the facial, and they could click the ruler icon in the pencil, and they could actually measure these data points to determine, you know, how far off they were from the faculty preparation. And believe it or not, they actually use this quite often. And you could delete any measurements that you want just by clicking the X button and then clicking the ones you want to delete. Likewise, you could slice this in an infinite number of planes. There's the sagittal coronal, and there's also this view. I like this for marginal ridge reduction. So here you could see the student really over reduce their marginal ridge, and they could actually measure that distance here um, at 600, 600 microns or so. And so that's uh, pretty nice there. And 
we're going to get out of the slice tools. We're going to delete any measurements, and we're going to move on to the margin icon. The margin shoulder evaluation is measuring the distance between these two lines, um, and for us, the ideal is one millimeter. And you could be as strict as you want as to how far off the student could be from that one millimeter. And so you can be as strict as you want with this. We're gonna we're gonna give them 150 microns. Uh, that's typically what we do. Um, you could type it in also if you wanted to. Um, 150. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna calculate where they were under reduced and tell you exactly how much. Blue would be they were not wide enough. Um, red is they're over reduced. And we see a lot of over reduction on the straight lingual typically. And it, it gives you a metric here. 79% of their finish line was within, you know, 150 microns of the one millimeter shoulder. And so that's what we get there. And that's, you know, something that could later be used to uh, assign a grade to this preparation. We typically will take the average of the total difference map at 300 microns and combine it with the preparation margin evaluation. And so we take these two numbers and average them together for what we call a reduction grade. Um, and it's completely objective at that point. So there's other things that this software could do. Um, Total occlusal convergence uh, takes into consideration adjacent wall taper and combines them into um, essentially an angle up here as it relates to the taper of these walls together. And so you'll see a live number displayed on the screen here. We don't evaluate uh, total occlusal convergence at our school, but I guess this could be really handy for those students who continue to struggle with over tapering their preparations to really demonstrate, you know, exactly where and why they're going wrong. We have the undercut gauge and what we do is any area it, it only measures significant undercuts as it relates to the path of insertion. So this student slightly undercut their lingual wall. That would just be an automatic failure at our university. And so it, it's right there and it's easily displayed uh, by cross-sectioning it and looking you know right at that red area there and you could come and see this angle here where the student curved in with their preparation that's unacceptable and so this would have just been an automatic failure and that's nice to have that backup rather than a faculty saying you undercut your lingual wall but when a student sees that it's undercut and they have the red spots it's a lot less argumentative and it's just a, not even a question of, hey, do I need to redo this? Is it really undercut there? And, and yes, it is. And so it's nice, super nice feature to have this um, as a backup. And so that's basically what we do here. Um, we utilize mainly the compute difference, the shoulder width, and the undercut gauge. Students typically take between three to five minutes to evaluate their preparation from start to finish. That includes scanning time, which typically takes under a minute. And we feel like this is transform the way that we evaluate preparations and feel that it's the future of assessment, not only self-assessment, but also as a tool to allow faculty to objectively assign a grade to a student preparation.